Over the past two days, I have heard the virtual voice of Rhode Island lamenting the loss of 100 of its very talented, hard-working, and yes, fun-loving young men and women. I have heard and I have seen mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, and sons and daughters of these dead ask, why did this happen? How did it happen? How can we ever cope with the depth and breadth of the enormity of the loss each victim represents? All our voices of anguish, despair, and above all, love for those wrenched from the families of their grieving loved ones. The state of Rhode Island, through the Department of Attorney General and the defense team representing the defendant, have made presentations here this afternoon and have presented informative pre-sentence memoranda. The state has recommended that the defendant receive the full 10 years to serve per the negotiated plea. And the defense team has urged no incarceration and requests a period of community service to be served by this defendant. Despite the measured, articulate, and erudite presentation by each side in this case, this court finds that neither the state's recommendation nor the defense recommendation are appropriate in this case. This court must sentence the defendant for the offense for which he has pled guilty. That offense is misdemeanor manslaughter occasioned by the defendant's conduct in not obeying the law regarding pyrotechnic uses. The outcome of that violation was a proximate cause of the death of 100 innocent individuals. Despite the horrific outcome of these actions, this court must sentence, impose a sentence which reflects the nature of the crime committed by this defendant. What truly makes this case so serious and devastating to the families of the victims and to the Rhode Island community as a whole is the sheer, almost incomprehensible amount of life lost as a result of the defendant's crime and the profound and everlasting effect it has had and will continue to have on the loved ones of the deceased. This court is most acutely aware that there is no sentence which could be imposed today or in fact sustainable by law which could possibly reflect the value of the lives lost or in any way bring back the wonderful unique people into the lives of those who love them or to extinguish the pain that all experience on a daily basis. This court must render a decision taking into account the devastating outcome of this crime. However, the law requires that the sentence be predicated on the nature of the offense and not solely on the basis of the outcome of it. In addition to the severity of the crime, this court must consider the defendant's personal profile his potential for rehabilitation, societal deterrence, and appropriate punishment. In this case, the defendant has pled guilty to these charges. He has accepted personal responsibility for his actions. From the time of the defendant's plea on February 7th of this year through his allocution to the court today, the court finds as a fact that the defendant has shown genuine and heartfelt remorse for his role in this crime. Finally, it is most important to note, and admittedly hard for some to understand or distinguish, that the commission of this crime was totally devoid of any criminal attempt, intent on the part of the defendant. Mr. Beakley, counsel kindly approached the clerk's desk.
Mr. Beakley, the greatest sentence that can be imposed upon you has been imposed upon you by yourself. That is having to live a life, an entire life, knowing that your actions were approximate cause of the deaths of 100 people. The court can only fashion a sentence according to law and not according to the results of your actions. Any attempt by me here today or by others to correlate any sentence imposed today with the value of these lives or to attach any other yardstick that may be applied, I believe would be a dishonor to the memory of the victims of this tragedy. You and the victims' families will be forever mindful of the fatal, that fatal night, and it is not within the power of this or any court to fashion a sentence reflective of the enormity of this tragedy. Robert F. Kennedy quoted the great Greek poet uh, Aeschylus when he said, quote, even in our sleep, pain which cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until in our own despair and against our will comes wisdom through the awful grace of God, unquote. That may be all that anyone so touched by this loss can expect to look forward to in the future. Of course, consider the opinion after considering all the totality of the circumstances in this case is that this offense does require a period of incarceration as a result of this criminal act. This court will therefore sentence you to 15 years at the ACI four years of which to be served by you, with 11 years suspended, and the court will place you on probation for a period of three years. This court does not believe that you pose a uh, threat to society in the future. The court uh, believes that this is reasonably appropriate for the matters we have heard here today. All right, sir. Uh, and so an end to the dramatic uh, scene in Providence Superior Court with Dan Beakley. Hand